Hi, everyone. Super excited to see if we can get our slides up here. Awesome. Well, I'm super excited to get a chance to talk to all of you about some of the challenges faced in scaling Facebook to well over 300 million users and hopefully give you kind of an insight into some of the technical and organizational challenges we faced in doing that. In order to do that first, though, I think we all have to have a sense of what is it that people do on Facebook every day, and why does that present a unique set of scaling challenges for us technically? People spend billions of minutes every day on Facebook. It's now up to, as we just announced today, 8 billion minutes online every day using Facebook. What are they doing on Facebook? They're sharing with their friends. They're sharing billions of pieces of content every day. Links, photos, videos, status updates, notes, sharing, communicating, and collaborating with all the people around them that they care about in this world. One of the most popular pieces of sharing on Facebook is sharing photos. We're one of the largest photo sharing sites on the web. People are uploading billions of photos a month. We have a little over 20 billion photos stored on Facebook.com. And photos are a really rich part of the overall experience and present some unique scaling challenges because of how rich and big our pages are and how much photos are a part of the Facebook experience. So we serve a little over 1.2 million photos per second on a peak day uh, in terms of providing users with that great, awesome, enriching experience. And I think the other thing to remember is this isn't just on Facebook.com. Increasingly, people are taking their social graph, their connections, the people around them, and bringing it with them everywhere on the web and everywhere in the world, whether that be on an Xbox, on an iPhone, or on their favorite website. To give you a sense of the pace of the growth of the Facebook platform, yesterday we serviced a little bit over 5 billion API calls. Facebook platform is growing at a much faster rate than the overall website and is servicing and powering many of these games and experiences all across the world. And I think when you think about scaling, you can't just look at where you ended up. You have to see how long it took you to get there. And I think this is the thing that kind of still shocks me to this day is how quickly Facebook has grown. In the just a little over a year that I've been there, we've grown from 100 million 30-day actives to 300 million 30-day actives. All of those people on the site having a totally unique experience, sharing videos, photos, web, status updates, doing all of those immersive experiences. So now I'd like you to kind of get a sense of how this problem is interesting and, and difficult from a scaling perspective. If you think about, there we go, traditional websites. So let's say that I wanted to launch a new Web 2.0 startup and I wanted to revolutionize web-based email. The basic pattern for this is very simple. I set up my servers, maybe got a couple of web servers and my database server. User shows up, starts using my service, we're off and running. Let's say my new web-based email service takes off and more people start showing up to my website. The way most traditional websites scale this is a really, really well understood pattern. It's something we've been using since I'd say the mid-1990s. In terms of more people show up, I add more servers, and I split up my databases. So if I'm looking at my email inbox and you're looking at your email inbox, those two things have barely, basically nothing to do with each other. So we can literally put my data on a different server and your data on a different server, and the interface between them is, is totally irrelevant. So it's a perfectly horizontally scalable problem. You can just literally throw machines at the problem, uh, and there, there's nothing you know, terribly new and novel about this. This is a pattern, as I said, we've been using for the last decade or so in order to scale traditional websites. If you look at the launch of the original version of Facebook, it actually looked quite like this. Mark launched it in his dorm room on the you know, college campus of Harvard. Uh, launched it there, was running on a single machine in, in his room. Um, he was doing kind of live updates as, as new feature requests came in or there was a bug on the site. Um, took off and of course asked the question, hmm, does this work on other college campuses? So he decided to launch it in a few other colleges to see what the experience would be like there. And at this time, if anyone had used the site at the time, they looked almost like completely separate websites. You had harvard.facebook.com and stanford.facebook.com, and people didn't tend to interact across these websites. So you had, again, this perfectly partitioned problem where if I'm in the Stanford network, I don't have to share my data with people in the Harvard network. This obviously changed when we decided to allow people to friend each other across the networks within the college networks and changed dramatically in 2006 when anyone in the world could friend anyone else in the world. And this is a visualization of actual friending data happening on Facebook where people are friending each other all across the world. So what you're left with is this huge interconnected network of people, people and things, this huge interconnected network of data where everyone is communicating across the same bus, the same social graph. And it's way bigger, again, billions of pieces of content a week, 
billions of photos a month, way bigger than you could possibly get on a single database. So you can't just buy a bigger machine, you have to spread this data out. But any one person is gonna access a very large portion of this data. So if you think of someone coming to the website and rendering a page, they're gonna touch this huge wide set of data. And as more people show up, each one of them isn't touching an isolated set of data, they're touching this huge connected set of data that we have to query in real time in order to build them their Facebook experience. So in order to build this, we've had to build a number of key novel systems. So let's take a very specific example. Let's take rendering my home page. Got a couple of actual stories here for my home page. And you think about this, and this is something we do a couple of billion times a day in under a couple of seconds, right? We need to build this home page for people, and the first question I need to answer is, amongst the hundreds or thousands of friends that I have that are each doing tens or hundreds of things, meaning tens of thousands of stories happening in my network, what are the 45 most interesting things that are happening or the most current things that are happening, and how do I show them to you on my home page? Uh, doing that on a traditional database architecture across this distributed data set of databases is just not feasible. It just doesn't scale, is, is not fast enough to, to get it done. So we built what we call multi-feed, which is a custom distributed system that in memory caches most of the recent activity across the social graph, and is custom tuned to allow us to be able to answer questions like, what's happening in my friend's network right now, filtered by what's most interesting to me, and give me that result in 10, 20 milliseconds. Once we get the result from this system without touching any single database or using any traditional software architecture, we then need to fill out the data that's in there because part of the Facebook experience is this rich, immersive photos, comments, likes, all of the data around the story, not just a little text snippet of what happened. And so again, we need to go back to this well of data, this billions of pieces of content, hundreds of millions of people, query the data at really high rate. So we took a piece of open source software, Memcache, deployed it, and customized it very heavily in order to scale to meet our needs. So we're servicing millions, 50 million operations a second via Memcache in order to fetch this large set of data, photos, comments, likes, uh, all of the information about it in real time. And building on top of Memcache, we were able to scale Memcache 5x its original performance. So that's at least a glimpse into some of the challenges that we face in terms of scaling Facebook. And I think the, the actual more interesting question to me beyond the technology is, how do you build an organization that can innovate over time? that continues to innovate in product and technology. And this is a discussion we have quite a lot at Facebook and something I care a lot personally. How do we build an organization that can continue to compete and innovate and build great products? And we've talked a lot about this within Facebook and come up with really three core things that we believe is part of our engineering culture. The first main tenet is what we call move fast, break stuff. It means bias towards action, get stuff done, and we really do mean the break stuff. It means that sometimes we push bugs, sometimes we push products that people don't like, but you have to build an organization that's willing to take risks and willing to fail in order to allow people to really innovate and build the next big thing. Also engineering impact. One stat I track all the time is number of users to engineers at Facebook, we call it our leverage ratio. We're now at 1.2 million users for every engineer at Facebook. So even though our engineering team has been growing dramatically, our users are growing faster than that. And finally, the willingness to be bold to not accept existing solutions, to take something and change it if you need to. Memcache, when we deployed, like I said, 5x faster than it was when we first deployed it, because we basically rewrote it a couple of times in order to scale in our architecture. So being willing to revisit existing assumptions and try something new. So that, in a very short clip, is my sense of why Facebook is an interesting scaling challenge, different than traditional websites, and some of the things we've thought about in terms of our engineering culture, in terms of how to scale and build an innovative technology company. Thanks, everyone.